Sometimes when something happens that is you know, very powerful, outstanding, you remember no matter how long ago it was. Just like everybody in America remembers, at least those who are alive now, what they were doing when John F. Kennedy was shot. <laughs> that was in 1962. I still remember what I was doing when I got the news. <laughs> it's just interesting when something really powerful, but at the same time not very pleasant happens. This microphone doesn't work. Doesn't it? Hey, you have a tendency to remember that. Okay. So this will speak a little bit about Sri Bas Pandit. And this is from Adi Lila, chapter 10, verse number 8. Can you bring it up? It's not working? Okay. All right, so it's easy to follow. Sri Vas Pandit Ara. Sri Vas Pandit Ara. Sri Rama Panditi Pandita. Sri Rama Pandita. Dui Bai Dui Saka. Dui Bai Dui Saka. Jagate Vidita. Jagate Vidita. How can I speak? Sri Vas Pandit Ara. Sri Rama Pandita. Dui Bai Dui Saka. Jagate Vidita. Word for words, Sri Vas Pandit. Sri Vas Pandit. Ara. And. Sri Rama Pandit. Sri Rama Pandit. Dui Bai. Two brothers. Dui Saka. Two branches. Jagate. In the world. Well, um, Vidita, well known translation. The two brothers, Sri Vas Pandit and Sri Ram Pandit, started two branches of the Chaitanya tree that are well known in the world. Purport. Lagora Gonadeshti Pika, verse 90. Sri Vas Pandit. Srivas Thakur is described as an incarnation of Narada Muni, and Sri Ram Pandit, his younger brother, is said to be an incarnation of Parvat Muni, a great friend of Narada's. Srivas Pandit's wife Malini is celebrated as an incarnation of the nurse Ambika, hmm, who fed Lord Krishna with her breast milk. And as already noted, his niece Narayani was the mother of Dakor Vrindavandas, the author of Chaitanya Bhagavat, and the sister of Ambika in Krishna Lila. We also understand from descriptions of the Sri Chaitanya Bhagavat that after Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu accepted the sannyas order, Sri Vaspanda left Navadvi, possibly because in of feelings of separation and domiciled in Kormahata. Sri Pati Sri Neritara Dui Sohodara Chara Bhaira Dasa Dasi Griha Parikara. These two brothers were named Sri Pati and Sri Nidhi. These four brothers and their servants and maidservants are considered one of the big branch. Dui Sakara Upasakaya Tansabara Ganana Yaha Griha Mahaprabhur Prabhura Sada Sankirtana. There is no counting the sub branches of these two branches. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu held congregational chanting daily at the house of Sri Rasfanda Kumayana Shri Bhakti Vedanta Swami Itinamane 
Namaste Saras Bhakti Dei Vai Gaura Vali Pachari Vai Sai Sasunya Vali Pasyati Arai Sakari Vai Jai Sri Krishna Sai Kanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadara Sri Vasa Gaura Bhakti Vinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Hare Hare. Mm-hmm. So Panchatadvatmakam Krishnam Bhakta Rupa Sarupakam Bhakta Avataram Bhakta Kyam Namami Bhakti Shakti Kam. Mm-hmm. So these five make up what is known as the five truths of the absolute truth. Sri Vas is the, what is called the uh, Incarnation of Jiva Shakti, and in the best way he is also Narada Muni, come again, it's mentioned here. His brother, his, one of his younger brothers, he, there were five brothers in the family. There were Sri Pati, Sri Nidhi, Sri, Sri Vas, and Sri Ram, the Pandit. And then there was Nalini. Now, Lini, you don't hear so much about her. Lini was an older brother that died before actually Lord Chaitanya appeared. And uh, Nalini, his daughter was Narayani, who was the one that was the mother of Vrindavan Das Thakur. So these four, five brothers, four of them we know, <coughs> Nalini we don't hear much about because there wasn't, there's no record of his activities. At least that's mentioned here. But uh, the house of Sri Vas Pandit became the place where Lord Chaitanya performed many pastimes. It was his favorite place for doing Harinam, especially in the evening. And there are many interesting stories that center around that. Uh, Lord Chaitanya, we all know how much he loved to do Sankirtan. In fact, he came to bring the Sankirtan movement to the world, purify the world through this process. Golokirya Premadan Harinam Sankirtan. Sankirtan is the essence of all spiritual activities. And it's, the, and it's the way to purify not only oneself, but everything in this world. Whatever there is, it says in one place, whatever there mellows of Sankirtan is being performed, then what is the need for anything else? There's no need for anything else. Because when Sankirtan is there, everything is there. It's Radha and Krishna. And their most magnificent, merciful form uh, in the form of their own holy names. So Lord Chaitanya, who is Sri Krishna Chaitanya Radha Krishna Nahyanya, he is Krishna, but he has the quality and nature and color of Srimati Radharani. So he presented that Sankirtan movement as the essence of all spiritual practice in this age. You know, Prabhupada really wanted us to do Sankirtan as much as possible. I remember, I remember in the old days, there were devotees who were organizing Sankirtan groups and would go out all day just on Sankirtan. In the early, in the early days, Prabhupada emphasized Sankirtan so much, the average temple was doing 12 hours of say 10 to 12 hours of Sankirtan a day. And you can see, if you see the old Back to Godhead magazines, the ones in the very beginning, practically all the photos in the magazines are devotees doing Sankirtan in different parts of the world. <laughs> so Prabhupada knew how to spread the movement fast. He didn't emphasize that in India so much, because he thought the Indian people would not appreciated, thinking we were just beggars out in the streets who had no jobs and were just trying to panhandle some money so they could get something to eat. So Prabhupada didn't really <laughs> emphasize that. Now we are doing Sankirtan more and more in India than before, because our movement now is established and people know who we are. And 
rather than who they think we are. <laughs> People used to think of us in so many ways. They used to think we were CIA agents coming from America to spy on India. Yeah. That went to Congress, that went into the Parliament of India. There was discussions in that. And there were people who were determined to make that, that uh, you know, the emphasis. But the Parliament, after hearing many arguments, said, uh, we, we have concluded that there is no evidence that they are CIA agents. How many CIA agents can sleep on the ground, follow four regulative principles, <laughs> and eat only kitchen. <laughs> so that was one way that they concluded. <laughs> but it was obvious it was not. So people thought we were from different. But even in the Western world when we did Sankirtan, they used to think of us in so many different ways. <laughs> Um, people from another planet who had descended in their strange outfit, their, uh, what they say, unconventional haircut, <laughs> and so many things. <laughs> we were seen in different ways. Prabhupada said, when we were in the beginning, he said, first they will laugh at you, which they did, they used to laugh at us all the time. <laughs> and then they will hate you, and then they will love you. <laughs> so we're somewhere between the love-hate stage right now. <clears throat> you know, many people do love us, and there's still those who have that negative attitude. <clears throat> so our movement has evolved through the process of the Sankirtan movement which has really established everything that we needed in order to develop a, a, a what is it, a superstructure, which means temples, you know, farm communities, restaurants, schools, and various educational programs in around the world, which are now more than a thousand all around the world. <clears throat> So, yeah, it was the Sankirtan movement that was the foundation to bring in all auspiciousness. And, of course, purify the devotees and to purify the world to at least as much as we did it. So, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu emphasized in his uh, process of teaching pure devotional service. Uh, and he would love to uh, dance, he would love to sing. No, not so much singing. He would love to dance and he would love to play cartels. Usually he let his the, the disciples sing. He would sing sometimes, but not very much. It was mostly Mukunda who was singing, or it was, who else? Gadadhar Pandit, who else? Um, Madhweta, he would also sing. <coughs> um, many others, and there were many good singers in Lord Chaitanya's uh, ensemble. And Lord Chaitanya would love to do Sankirtan as much as possible, so at one time he declared that every night in the house of Sri Pandit, those of us who the more intimate devotees would gather for Harinam Sankirtan, they would start in the evening around sundown, and they would go all the way to the morning for sun. They would start at sundown and end at sunrise. That was the way they, they calculated their time. And there was many stories, and she was that pundit's mother-in-law. She wasn't allowed in. Many people weren't allowed in. She wanted to see it, so she came and she hid behind a big basket. She covered herself with a basket. <laughs> and uh, But she was caught. And, because as soon as Lord Chaitanya would sing and dance, then all of a sudden, if there was someone who was not pure there, he could feel that energy, and immediately he would stop and say, who's here that shouldn't be here? And she, he would always call Srivast, and Srivast would say, my dear Lord, there's no one here 
that shouldn't be here. No, no, you go look. And he would look around, and there was his mother-in-law hiding behind a basket. And he would take her out and escort her out the door. Uh, he was very, uh, very dedicated to Lord Chaitanya's happiness. So if there's any disturbance with Lord Chaitanya's singing and dancing, he would do whatever he could to correct it. It's like when his son died. His son was four years old, the boy had some disease, and he died in the house during the evening when Lord Chaitanya was doing kirtan. And the ladies in the back of the house, because they had a separate place for the, for the residents, they were crying. And um, Srivas Thakur inquired, why are you crying? Well, your son died. That's all right, but uh, don't cry so loud. He'll disturb this in Lord Chaitanya. So then he went back. And then after nine and a half hours, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu stopped. No, I'm sorry, no, no. Seven and a half hours, he stopped and he said, Hmm, ah, uh, Srivas, um, uh, I think there's some calamity happened here. And Srivas responded, My dear Lord, what calamity could possibly happen with you here? <laughs> but since you asked, my son died. <laughs> oh, really? Where is he? Now in the back, take me. So he went and the boy was there. And the boy was laying on the bed. He had left his body. The relatives were quiet, crying quietly. And Lord Chaitanya walked over to the boy and with his hand, put his hand on the boy's chest. The boy got up, looked around, and Lord Chaitanya spoke to him and said, oh, My dear son of Srivas, where did you go? The boy responded, It was my time up in this body, and by your arrangement, I went on to I'm going on to my next destination. And he spoke the absolute truth to everyone, that the soul is different than the body. And uh, everyone became a little bit sober and pacified. And then the boy lay down and left his body again. <laughs> so the Lord did that just to give transcendental knowledge to everyone. And the Lord was so grateful to Srivas. And Srivas didn't even come and say anything, although his son died, not to disturb Lord Chaitanya's dancing. That Lord Chaitanya was living it only or by doing vigorous penance, the Lord said. Do you not know that I am above the three qualities, sattva, tamma, and rajas? A person who keeps company with Sudabhakta like you, with a serving attitude, can only become free from anarthas or obstacles for attaining me. And he only be becomes benefit by getting my darshan and listening to Sankirtan conducted by me, Mahaprabhu was saying. In this context, okay, but then there's, there's a diversional way from that. Mm -hmm. And then it goes on to explain how, let's see. After hearing this chastisement from Maha, the Brahmachari left the place out of fear. But he considered himself very fortunate because he could listen at least something of the Sankirtan of Mahaprabhu. And he was not the disappointed, and he also got darshan. And the most munificent Mahaprabhu, who is the indwelling super soul in the hearts of everyone, who knows everything, understood the heart of the Brahmachari. And by seeing the favor of Srivas Pandit on the Brahmachari, he called the Brahmachari and showered his blessings on him. The Lord advised him for doing Haribanja under the guidance of Premaka Bhakta after after ongoing all of his foregoing all of his ideas of tapasya. Hmm. So he gave him his mercy after because the Brahmachari was very humble. Accepted the chastisement without complaining and was feeling grateful for the Lord's darshan. So um, you see in that example how he accepted chastisement without without feeling bad or even complaining. 
he simply considered it a blessing. And by doing that, he, he uh, got the benefit of the Lord. And of course, because of Srivas too. And there are many stories in the house of Srivas Pandit. The Lord performed the Mahakash Leela. 21 hours, he gave out blessings to anyone and everyone. And Maha, uh, Mahaprabhu was very, what we say, inclined to Srivas a lot. He would always come to his house for programs, for associating with devotees. One time he said to Srivas, he said, uh, Srivas, yeah. hmm. um, you know, you don't work. You don't have a job. How do you live? You have a big family. It was four brothers with their wives and all and children also all living in one house. Nobody worked. <laughs> and the Lord said, How do you live? How do you eat? So she was responded in a very unusual way. He went three times. And the Lord was a little questionable. He said, what does, what does that mean? Well, my dear Lord, once, one day, the Lord doesn't feed me. Two days, if he doesn't provide for me and my family. Three days, we get nothing after three days, then I jump into Ganges. In other words, I commit suicide. <laughs> and the Lord, when he heard that, he roared. I mean, his roar shook the whole universe. And Lord Chaitanya would roar. It's like everything would fall. <laughs> and he, and uh, he said right after that, even if the goddess of fortune locks me, has to go from door to door begging for food, locks me begging for food. Even there will always be everything you need in your house. In other words, because you have complete faith that by doing bhakti yoga, or devotional service, the Lord will provide everything, then that faith will carry you through. <laughs> Now, I tell this story often, and I always look at the audience to see what kind of reactions they're going to give me for this story. And the idea is, if you don't have the faith, don't do it. <laughs> but if you have the faith, it works. It's based on faith. To get that faith, of course, means to perform devotional service for an extended period of time, at least for a while. And then that faith builds that, yes, Krishna will always take care of me. It doesn't matter. I don't have to get a work to do anything else. Krishna will feed me. Even if I have a family, he will take care of me. And that's the fact. If we're doing devotional service, the Lord will always take care. That means not just devotional service, but serious devotional service. Not that once in a while, <laughs> but continuously. And the Lord will provide everything. Because he's providing for everything, everyone. He's called Vishwambar. He provides for the whole universe. And he provides even for the non-devotees who don't worship him. He makes sure that they get their food because they also his living. They're also his parts and parcels. So he takes care of them through the material energy. But for the devotees, he takes care of them directly. So how a devotee cannot be taken care of by the Lord if they're giving their life in devotional service? The Lord will automatically take care of the devotee. But you have to have that faith and that devotion. It's not something you can just do and expect, well, I'm not going to do nothing, I'll sit and read books all day and chant a few rounds. Okay, where's the food? 
No, you have to have, you have to be engaged in devotional service, and you also have to have that faith that you know, Rocky Krishna Mori K Mori Krishna Rocky K. Krishna wants to provide for you, protect you, supply everything you need. He can do that, and if he wants to completely neglect you, even if you work hard, you can't get anything. <laughs> So the Lord is the supreme controller, supreme provider, supreme maintainer, supreme protector, supreme feature of all existence. When one surrenders to Krishna in devotional service, then one's life becomes perfect. Jai Sri Sri Panchatattva Ki Jai. Now these are some stories about Sri Vas. One day, Mm, Advaita Charya said to all the devotees, let's have kirtan. Lord Chaitanya wasn't there at the time. But we're going to chant, we're not going to chant Hare Krishna. We're going to chant Goranga. 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 Goranga! And the devotees were thinking, you know, Mahaprabhu's not going to like this. <laughs> but he wasn't there. So, you know, so Advaita, he was just getting all the devotees going, come on, let's chant. So they were chanting, go around here, go around here, go around here, like that. And then the kirtan really started to build really loud. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was at a distance, but he heard the kirtan. So he started coming towards the kirtan. He got closer and closer and closer and closer, and then he could hear. Why are they not chanting Krishna's name? <laughs> then he listened. Oh, they're chanting. So, Mahaprabhu, I mean, the way the chariot, all the devotees, they saw the Lord there. And they, the devotees stopped, but the way the chariot said, No, don't stop. Come on, chant, 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 Garanga, Garanga, Garanga. So he was really getting them going. And, uh, the devotees were like, half of them were doing it, half of them were doing it half-heartedly. <laughs> because they knew Mahaprabhu didn't like that. And Mahaprabhu was looking, and then at one point he just turned around, went back to his place, lay down, closed the door, and went to sleep. <laughs> and then he got up a little later, and Srivas was there to greet him. And then he said to Srivas, what are the devotees doing? Why are they not chanting Krishna's name? Why are they chanting this other name? And then Srivas went like this. It was this, this was daytime. It was, the, the sun was out. So Srivas went, put his hand in front of the sun. And, went, and Lord Chaitanya said, what are you doing? He said, I'm blocking the sun out. Lord Chaitanya said, you can't do that. And then Sriva said, and yes, that's true, but and you can't hide yourself from us. <laughs> so he wanted to show that, yeah, the devotees know that he is the Supreme Personality of God. <laughs> but, of course, in, his, in this particular Leela, he didn't want that emphasized because he knew people would also, surreptitiously or pretentiously say, well, I'm God. <laughs> so in order to destroy that, even though he was God, he acted as a devotee of God to teach the position of devotion from the position of the devotee of God, and not from God. <laughs> These are some of the pastimes of Sri Vastak. Well, there are many others. During the Rathi Yatra, Sri Vastakura was there. And uh, <clears throat> Sri Vastakura was also one of the lead dancers when Lord Chaitanya divided the group of dance devotees into seven groups. There was a lead dancer and a lead singer in every, day, in every group. Dwaita Charya was a lead dancer in one group. Nikananda was a lead dancer. Haridasa Thakur was a lead dancer in one group. Srivas was also the lead dancer. And then there was Padvakaishwar Pandit also. And then there were lead singers such as Mukunda, 
And who else? Can't think of all of the different singers. The devotees from Kulina Grama were also there. And the devotees, the Lord divided the groups. And Srivas, he was the lead dancer in one of the groups. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So Srivas, of course, he is Narada Muni. One time, Lord Chaitanya still performed a dramatic play where he uh, he took the part of mm, he took the part of uh, who was that Rukmini I think it was Rukmini yeah the Lord was playing the part of a lady one of his chief queens in the play it was a uh, play on Dwarka. And um, he played the part so good, his mother's looking and she's thinking, who's that playing the part of Rukmini? She couldn't even recognize her own son. <laughs> and they said, ah, Sachi, that's your son, Nima. <laughs> no, yeah, he looks so beautiful. <laughs> so he could be a girl or a boy, he was so beautiful <laughs> in, that, in that sense. His features were so pleasing and so sweet. And in that same play, Nara, uh, Srivas played the part of Narada Muni, which is his own real identity, because we know that the identity of all of the Panchatattva is a little different than they play in the role when they come before Chaitanya. That Dinanda is Balaram, Gadadhar is a combination of Sridhar, I mean, not Sridhar, but um, Srimati Sri Radharani and Lalita Shakti, both two energies of the, of the Gopi Lila in one. Uh, Advaita is um, he's, uh, Sada Shiva, the original Shiva, and Mahavishnu. And of course, Lord Caitanya is Krishna himself in the, in the mood of Srimati Radharani. So all of them are manifesting different aspects of the absolute truth in their different role as they play the role of spreading Krishna consciousness around the world. So one who worships Lord Caitanya and the Panchatattva is worshiping the highest form of Bhakti. Bhakti. Because the Supreme Personality Godhead has manifest himself in five forms of himself just to teach the whole process of pure devotional service from different angles of vision. And Prabhupada would say, the Mayavadi say God is one, we say no, God is five. Vanchitattva makam krishnam bhakta rupa sarupakam Bhakti-avataram bhakti-kyam namami bhakti shakti kam. So the Lord manifests himself in five features of himself in order to play different, to, to exhibit different aspects of the absolute truth, which is multi, multi-faceted. And Srivas is one of them. See, there is many other pastimes of Srivas also. Um, these are the ones that are, I can recall. Let's see here, Srivas, that for. One day, Lord Chaitanya ordered Srivas Thakur to read Brihat Sarasinam, the thousands names of Vishnu, for he wanted to hear them at that time. As Srivas read the thousand names of the Lord, in due course of time, the holy name of Lord Nishringa appeared. When Lord Chaitanya heard the holy name of Lord Nishringa, he became fully absorbed in thought. <laughs> mm. 
In the mood of Lord Nisringadev, Lord Chaitanya ran through the streets, club in hand, ready to kill all the atheists. <laughs> he doesn't fool around. Seeing him appearing in the very feast ecstasy of Lord Nisringa, people ran from the street and fled here and there, afraid of his anger. Seeing the people so afraid, the Lord came to his external senses and thence returned to the house of Srivas and threw away the club. The Lord became morose and said to Srivas, the core, When I adopted the mood of Lord Nisringadev, people were greatly afraid, therefore I stopped, since causing fear among people is an offense. Sri Thakur replied, anyone who takes your holy name vanquishes ten millions of his offenses immediately. There was no offense in you appearing as in Srinidhi. Rather, any man who saw you in that mood was immediately liberated from the bondage of material existence. After saying this, Sri Thakur worshipped Lord the Lord, who was then greatly satisfied and returned to his own home. So here's an example how a devotee of the Lord knows how to say things to the Lord to make the Lord happy or pleased. <clears throat> this, is the, this is the duty of the servants to pacify the spiritual master, to pacify the uh, Lord. They also say that. <clears throat> That's their duty that they see them as spiritual masters. It uh, has some concern, it is having some trouble. It's the disciples will do something to relieve that. That is their service, generally. So we see here, Srivas could have just said, yes, my Lord, you scared everybody. They all ran, but he didn't. He said, no, they were all greatly benefited because anyone who saw that you would be liberated from the tyranny. And that made the Lord feel good because he was feeling bad that he had caused fear in the hearts of people. But Sri Vas explained that anyone who saw you, he's liberated. No, there was no offense. <laughs> okay, so these are, let's see, I can find something else for Sri Vas that we're here. How many stories here? Lord Sri Krishna, before appearing as Lord Chaitanya, requested these devotees to precede him. Sri Sanchi Mata, Jagannath Mishra, Madhavendra Puri, Keshava Bharati, Ishwara Puri, Advaita Charya, Srivas Pandit, Acharya Ratna, Vidyanidhi, and Thakur Haridas. I'll mention them. These are the ones that have preceded the Lord before he appeared in the world. And they set the stage for the Lord's appearance. Acharya Ratna. <clears throat> They're all exhibiting the great happiness when they saw when the Lord actually appeared. So it says here, Acharya Ratna and Sri Vastakar were overwhelmed with joy and immediately went to the bank of the Ganges to bathe in her waters as soon as uh, the Lord appeared. Their minds full of happiness, they chanted the Hare Krishna mantra and gave charity by mental strength. This is all because of the appearance of Lord Chaitanya. Chandra Shekhar Acharya and Srivas Thakur both came to Jagannath misery and drew his attention in, in, in many ways. And this is all doing 
they performed the ritualistic ceremony prescribed at the time of the birth according to the principles. This is when the Lord actually appeared in the world. Mm. Okay. Srivastha Kaur worship Lord Chaitanya by the process of Abhishek. And sitting on the cot, the Lord exhibited transcendental opulence. Some of them were bathing the Lord. At this function at the house of Srivast, Nityananda appeared, and when he met with Lord Chaitanya, he got the opportunity to see the Lord in his six armed form of Satruj. Oh, the story of Gopal Chapel. That's, that's a nice story. I'll read that. 1737. This is a very important pastime. <clears throat> Lord Chaitanya regularly held congregational chanting in the Hare Krishna Mahamantra <coughs> at the house of Srivas every night for full one year. This ecstatic chanting was performed with doors closed so that non-believers who came to make fun could not gain entrance. Thus the non-believers almost burned to ashes and died out of envy. To retaliate, they planned various ways to give trouble to Srivast. One night, while Kirtan was going on in the house of Srivast Thakur, a brahmana named Gopal Chapala, the chief of the non-believers, who was talkative and very rough in his speech, placed all of the paraphernalia for worshipping Goddess Durga outside the house of Srivas Thakur's door, door. Purport, this brahmana, Gopal Chapala, wanted to defame Srivas by providing, proving that he was actually a worship of Bhavani, the goddess of fortune, but was externally posing himself as a Vaishnava. In Bengal, there is a perpetual competition between the devotees of goddess Kali and the devotees of Lord Krishna. Generally, Bengalis, especially those who are meat eaters and drunkards, are very much attached to worshiping goddess Durga, Kali, Sitala, and Chandi, such devotees who are known as Shaktas, for worshippers of the Shakti Tattva are always envious of the Vaishnavas. Since Srivas Thakur was a well-known and respected Vaishnava in Navadvip, Gopal Chapala wanted to reduce his prestige by bringing him down to the platform of the Shaktas. Therefore, outside Srivas Thakur's door, he plays various paraphernalia for worshipping Bhavani, the wife of Lord Shiva, such as a red flower, a plantain leaf, a pot of wine, and reddish sandalwood paste. In the morning, when Sri Thakur saw all the paraphernalia in front of the door, he called for the respectable gentlemen of the neighborhood and showed them that at night he was worshipping Bhavani. Very sorry, these gentlemen caused for a sweeper to clean the place and purify it, purify it by sprinkling it with cow dung. This incident concerning Gopal Chapala is mentioned in detail in Chaitanya in Bhagavad. And what happened was, after three days, because of his offense to Sri Thakur, he came down with leprosy. <clears throat> and because of the leprosy, he could not live in the community anymore. So he resided near the Ganges by himself. Uh, after about a month, Lord Chaitanya came walking by that same place. The Gopal Chapala saw the Lord and fell at the Lord's feet and asked for 
that please relieve me, I'm suffering so much from this leprosy. And the Lord looked at him and said, you think you're suffering now? This is just the beginning. You have offended Srivas. And therefore, the Lord didn't tolerate that. And he just walked on. So, nothing happened. But three months later, the Lord walked by again in the same place. And this time, Kopal Chakra was really, really, really repentant. <laughs> you know, it takes a little suffering sometimes for a person to wake up. <laughs> suffering is sometimes good. Many times it's good because it helps bring one person down to how they're supposed to think and act. When we're not suffering, we sometimes exhibit certain characteristics and qualities that are not very conducive to devotional life, such as pride or envy or ridicule or neglect. <clears throat> but when we suffer, then we're looking for help, we're looking for some relief. And then we become a little bit, we're forced to become humble. So this is what happened. And then this time, he asked the Lord again. The Lord said, I can't free you from this, but if you go to Srivas, he can. So he went to Srivas Thakur, fell at his feet. In the most pitiable and sorrowful way, he begged forgiveness, and Srivas forgave him. And because he forgave him, right after that, all his uh, leprosy was gone. And then he wanted to take initiation from Srivas. And Srivas said, well, I'm not giving initiation. But you go to this Vamsidari, this, this other devotee, who was giving initiation, and he pointed him in that direction. And so he went to Vamsidari, and Vamsidari accepted Gopal Chapala and initiated him, gave him the name Devendra, I think his name was something like that, and Deva something, can't remember. And that, that Gopal Chapala, who was now initiated as Devananda or Devas, I can't remember his name, he writes the most beautiful poetry glorifying the devotees of the Lord. All his writings are about how great the devotees of the Lord are. And you, if you read those poems, uh, it's, it's just amazing how first envious, offensive to the devotees, after getting suffering, which led him to get the mercy, after he got the mercy, became completely changed. And now, not only was he not thinking anything negative about devotees, he was just, all he could do was glorify the devotees. And that's what it means to be a devotee, to see that the devotees, to be in the association of the devotees means to be in the best association. Because that association brings you to Krishna. <laughs> Without devotee association, you can't do it. It's not possible. You can chant, you can read, you can do whatever you want. But unless you take a set regular association with devotees, your devotee bhakti won't develop. It just won't develop. <laughs> Why? Because Lord Chaitanya has made that the feature of how we how we should develop in our Krishna conscious. Sadhu Sangha, Sadhu Sangha. Sarva Sastri Hoy. Lava Mata Sadhu Sangha, Sarva Siddhi Hoy. When we associate with and serve devotees and develop friendship with devotees, we are in the spiritual family, in the right consciousness. This is what requires. Then you can chant the holy names. Then the philosophy makes sense and becomes clear. <laughs> then everything becomes. It's all by so That's why Prabhupada used to say, three things are important in Krishna consciousness. Association, association, association. He could remember those three. <laughs> he made that point, said that, just to make, just to emphasize how important it is. Because there's an old saying, tell me who you associate with and I'll tell you who you are. <laughs> so by your association, you develop certain characteristics, qualities, ideas, feelings, 
desires and goals in life. So when we associate with devotees, then, then we center everything around Krishna and Krishna's service. And that is the, that is the happiness of the devotee. Mm, devotee association. <coughs> Okay, so... Okay, so I think that's pretty much what I got on Sri Vast. There's more here, but it's a little after nine. Devotees are fasting today? No. This is the only place in the world that they fast on, on the Panchata, one of the Panchatattva's uh, repairs. Well, of course, it's good. We fan and, uh, yeah. They don't do it anywhere else in the world. They only fast on Advaita, Anityananda, and Mahaprabhu, Gadadha, and Srivast. We don't fast on no. But if it's the policy of the temple, go with it. Because the temple policy is the policy of how you make advancement. <laughs> So fasting is feasting, and feasting is fasting. And when you fast, the next meal is always better than before. <laughs> Something you have a tendency to relish more. So good. Okay. Thank you very much. Any questions, comments? Srivast Thakur, yeah. Okay. Do we have a microphone? Microphone. Where's the microphone? Microphone. No microphone. Well, just speak loud. Hare Krishna. Um, I would like to know what change. Um, from from Kirtan to Shriva's public house where um, non-devotees were not allowed it, women were not allowed it, and later on everybody could join him Kirtan. Well, these were special, these, these, where the, was this difference? these were special programs that the Lord would have every night. <clears throat> He would do kirtan throughout the day in the streets with his devotees. Throughout most of the day they would do kirtan. But at night he would have these special ones. And to keep out the, the atheists, the non-devotees, people who were not really developed in devotional service. He did, he went, the Lord really <coughs> absorbed himself in the ecstasy of kirtan at that time. <coughs> But these were, these were special, only in the house of Sri Vas and only in the evening. They would start, as I mentioned, seven, you know, not seven, but when the sun went down and then they would stop when the sun came up. Mentions here, they keep out the non-devotees. But during the day, the Lord was very merciful. He would go out and chant amongst everybody, invite everyone to take part in kirtan. And as it says here, people would even people would heckle him or make fun of him during the day with his devotees. But he wouldn't he wouldn't think of much of it and he continued with Kirtan. But when he had those private programs, he didn't want these people there. He wanted to absorb himself in the ecstasy of Kirtan. So during the day he did it with his devotees, but he did it to benefit everyone. In the evening was for his own, it was more of the internal mood. Thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? Thank you very much. Can you tell us about more elaborate about the association with devotees? Is this also including the association with materialistic devotees or, or the fixed one that are uh, serious in their practice? Yeah, mm -hmm. it says that 
materialistic devotees, you should, you can, uh, you should honor them in the mind. You can uh, offer your obeisances to them in the mind. But generally, we don't associate with materialistic devotees. Devotees who perform devotional service in order to, to somehow or other further their material life. <laughs> to, get a, to get something material from devotional service. But devotional service is not meant for that. But because everything is centered around the Lord, People can also come to the Lord for, you know, material benefits. That's very common. It's not only common, it's quite prolific everywhere. People want something material from Krishna consciousness. And after a while, if they get it, they become happy. And some of them stay and other, others go away. And then, then uh, because they got what they wanted. But they're not restricted to come. But at the same time, if you really want to make advancement, you have to so associate with people who are on your same level or people who are more advanced, either one. But, but in, the, in the assembly of people like this, anybody can come in. But association is by consciousness, it's not so much by physical proximity. The flea, the bug sits on the king, but is the king associating with the bug? No. <laughs> There's no connection. And so it's by, <clears throat> when we want to associate, we have to be in that mood of, of devotion, mood of service, mood of learning, mood of... Uh, Mood of, <clears throat> yeah, that mood of service, that mood of learning, that mood of devotion. That's association. <clears throat> Physical proximity will give you that opportunity, but it's not the game. It's not the success. You could be sitting here and you could be 100 miles away, you know, thinking of pizza somewhere in Italy, you know. And then you're not here. You're... You, wherever your mind is, that's where you are. <laughs> so every time your mind goes to, you know, something else, just bring it back. There's a story in relationship to that. Told by, I think it was Prabhupada, but I heard it back in the old days. Two boys are going to the prostitute. They're on their way, and they pass it along the kirtan program. So one of the boys said, oh, there's a devotee who's doing kirtan. I'm going to go. I'm not going to go to the prostitute. So his friend said, ah, oh, I'm not going. I'm not going to go. You go. So he went on to the prostitute. The other boy went to the kirtan. And while the boy's in the kirtan, he's thinking, boy, you know, well, here I am. And I could have been in the prostitutes enjoying like crazy. And the other boy who's in the prostitute's house, he's thinking, boy, my friend's really intelligent. He's, he's doing something for his spiritual benefit. Here I am wasting my time with this, this sinful life. You are where your consciousness is. <laughs> <laughs> Say that again. <laughs> I, I didn't catch the last few words. <laughs> Can we go to the prostitutes if we're in good consciousness? <laughs> well, Makunda will become Michael again, right? <laughs> Is it Michael? <laughs> Something. <okay. laughs> no. <laughs> well, the point, that point of that story is, it's, it's, it's an analogy. It's a, what does it call it? It's a, it's a message. 
that wherever your consciousness is, where it is, where you are. And that's that's a fact. You know, you know I, like I can I can sit here and watch, look at class, give class, and I can see who's listening and who's not. And I know you're somewhere else. It's easy to see when you give class, you can see who's who's with you and who's not. <laughs> and who's with you sometimes and who's with me <laughs> in and out, you know. It's, it's, it's easy to see. Can't hide. <laughs> so, yeah, so keep, that's why it says the process of listening means to destroy the faults of the mind, which means bring the mind back to the process of hearing it's like when we're in kirtan, when the mind wanders also. They say, close your eyes for a minute and then simply hear. And bring your consciousness back to the, the sound of the Holy Name. And then you're back into the, in, in the kirtan again. So, yeah, wherever you, your consciousness is, is where you are. That's why you can be Krishna conscious even this, in the material world. Okay. Is it Fran Franjo? Yes. Is that right? Did I say it right? Yeah. Uh, thank you for lecture. Um, I would say like this um, hypothet uh, hypothetical question. Okay. If a community chastises you that you are not capable of doing anything, and you are aware actually that uh, you must serve community how to approach uh, this situation. And who is the community? Is that one person or...? Uh, I don't know, maybe a team of, of, of people or something like this. Not really the whole yatra, maybe more. If you're talking about devotional service, then all you have to do is prove yourself. Uh, yeah. All right, I came. I came to learn. I came to serve. Prabhupada says, you come to learn, learn to serve. We're not jnanis. We simply co collect philosophical knowledge. We serve. We serve the Lord. If we don't serve the Lord, then we have to serve the material energy. So, therefore, when we come in association with devotees, we should be ready to offer service at any time. And we should also think, how can I serve? I mean, coming in the beginning, we hear. You know, we get here, we start to hear, we understand more and more. And then we think, well, you know, they're all, devotees are serving different ways. They're cooking, they're cleaning, they're worshiping, they're going out on Sankirtan. Let me become part of that. And then you're engaged in service. Then you're... They're in the acts of performing the activities of devotional service. Collecting knowledge philosophically may be in the beginning nice, just so you get a little understanding of what the whole thing is about and whether you want to take the next step or not. But just to stay on that level means that you don't you won't make any advancement like that. You have to serve. Just like uh, give you an example. Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati. One, uh, one uh, very prestigious per person in the political field came to see Bhakti Siddhanta. And but he came to Bhakti Siddhanta. Maharaj was by himself. He said, Maharaj, I got some questions to ask you. Do you have time? He said, Well, actually, no, I don't. But you can go to the pujaris and you can ask. Let them ask. You can ask their your questions to them. So he went to the pujaris, and the pujaris were cleaning the altar and doing all kinds of service for the deity. So he they, he said, "Well, Guru Maharaj just sent me here. I got some questions." They said, "All right, but we're we're busy right now. Why don't you help us? You can polish the brass." and the silver for the deities. So he thought, all right. So he sat down and he was working, cleaning and doing it. And after everything was done, the devotee said, what is your questions? He said, I don't have any questions. Thank you very much. 
got up, walked down, and he passed by Bhakti Siddhanta, and Bhakti, and Bhakti Siddhanta said, did the Pajaris answer your questions? Thank you, Maharaj, yes. Get the message? <laughs> you want to understand this philosophy, you got to serve. <laughs> You can't just read books. You can get some idea on how to read books. You, from reading books, you get ideas. But it becomes realized and it becomes part of you when you actually engage in service. Yeah. The karmis, they want to serve the material energy and enjoy the jnanis. They want to study philosophy and be free from material suffering. And, but the, the devotees who want to serve the Lord and actually you go back home back to Godhead. So, and the yogis, they want to perform austerities so they can become powerful. But the devotees, they're happy to serve, that's all. So because service is the nature of the soul's existence. To serve is natural. Knowledge leads to service. Austerity leads to service. Everything is meant to lead to service. So just persisting that you would like to serve and offering your yeah, time. retirement yeah. What happens out of it, it happens. Yeah, just, I mean, yeah, you, can, you know, the services are not so difficult. What if somebody tells you you're not capable or you don't have, I don't know, references? If you're serving, then are you capable or not? If you're dropping you everything? Like that you are not qualified or you are Everyone's too young or you're not enough. Yoga Why did you do? Did, did, did you do something to, to allow that person to think like that? Well, if you haven't, then continue to serve. If somebody says something, you just talk to the temple president or the temple leaders and say, "I want to do some service." I'm not so good at doing so many things, but I can do this, and I can do this, or maybe you can suggest something I can do. You can always do something. Clean the temple floor. That's how we used to introduce people to Krishna consciousness. We'd say, all right, clean the, when you clean the temple, you're cleaning your heart, because the heart is the temple. So clean the temple, and this will help you to progress in devotional service. Cut vegetables sometimes in the kitchen, that helps. We used to give that to new people, people who are just coming. Cutting vegetables, cleaning that, or just doing some, you know, maybe construction work or something like that. Different things. But if you want to go on an altar and worship, you have to wait for that. That thing comes in time. Or if you want to give the Bhagavatam class, that may take a little time also. So, but there's always service. So, if someone is giving you, saying that, then you, you can uh, question that. We allow everyone to serve. That's the whole idea, to bring people into service. Of course, sometimes people come to make trouble, but that's not you. <laughs> Some people come to make trouble and they want to they wanna disassociate with devotees so they can, you know, cause some problems. That happens too. But generally, you know, service is available. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It is like a court of law, you don't get any any retribution on the lower court, you go to the higher court. <laughs> okay, so we stop. Okay. <coughs> Thank you. Shri Vasta Kor Ki Jai. Shri Panchatattva Ki Jai. Gaur Pindana.